so there's no way you won't be elevated. So um, tonight we're having two sessions. The first one with um, Mr. Eitayo Rutumi. He'll be taking us on um, cultivating a growth mindset in teaching. Well, the second session is incorporating social impact projects. So, uh, just stay online while others join in. So, like I said, my name is Gladys Ola. So, I am a school administrator and educator, an LES enthusiast, and I'm here to learn and unlearn and relearn. Because learning is something that we can't stop doing. Uh, so now let me introduce our speakers tonight. I'll start by introducing the visionary of this um, program. Her name is Shola Adiola Sojibra. She's my mentor. She's an instructional school leader, a digital citizenship advocate, an applied digital skills ambassador, elementary math teacher, author, and a product, product manager, product manager fellow. Yes, she's the visionary. We all know her. If you are, yeah, if you have been on the Change Makers platform, you you will know her. Yeah, she's the visionary. So, like I said, she's an instructional school leader, a digital citizenship advocate, an applied digital skills ambassador elementary math teacher, author, and a product manager fellow at, I think at Utiva. While this, the first um, guest speaker today is Mr. to me a tire. He's an highly skilled trainer, a learning facilitator, a growth strategist, and is the executive, the chief executive officer of Team Masters Limited. He's very, he's very, he's very popular in the educator um, um, community. I don't know if you watched, uh, I used to follow him on YouTube, this um, Good Morning Educator show. So you can actually um follow him on youtube it's very it's very educative so he will be having him tonight and please have an open mind you know where is uh, schools is resuming by september and you need a good mindset so let us have an open mind this night and listen to him and uh, i think he's online i've seen him he's online yeah okay each session is 20 minutes it's going to be brief and very very impactful. So let's hold on for others as they log in. Some people are finding it difficult to log in. We as educators need to have good mindset if we must succeed in this uh, line of career we've chosen. 
most uh, uh, on my in my life in my all my years of teaching, I've discovered that most educators don't have this growth mindset. They have this laid back character that okay, I'm I'm a teacher, so my reward is in heaven. But there are so many teachers doing exploits now, so that's why you need to pay attention this this evening. So you can learn new ways, new strategies on how to, you know, everything begins with the mind. Everything starts with the mind, how you position yourself. So this evening, Mr. Rutsumi Eitai will be taking us on growth mindsets. Growth mindsets. We'll be starting in the next two minutes. Cultivating a growth mindset in teaching. You will discover how to instill a growth mindset in both you, you and your students. Promoting resilience, adaptability, and a genuine passion for learning. You explored strategies that seamlessly integrate continuous learning and innovative teaching approaches. Like we said, we are, approaching, we are already in the 21st century. While some teachers, their mindset is still in the 18th century. So you have to have an open mind this evening so that you can move from where you are to where you want to be. Our second presenter this evening is Mr. Okwaifa Olasukomi. He is the convener of Phenomenal 1.0. He's a social innovator and a wonderful person. He's an English teacher, an English language teacher, a edutain, <laughs> That's edu, edu, tena, edu, education and entertainment, a public speaker and an educational coach. Uh, I don't know. Most of us attended the um, um the last um Black Bets, um graduation last this. Okay, last month, and it was the convener and I'm part of those people that uh, graduated. So, so right now I'll be calling on. Someone wants to see my face. <laughs> okay, I'll be calling on Mr. Rutsumi Eitayo. Please, you have the stage, sir. Good evening, Mr. Rutsumi Eitayo. Yeah. Good evening. Can you hear my voice? Can you hear me? Hello, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me, please? I need a confirmation. Can you hear me? If you can, just type yes so that I'm sure. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, good evening once again. I would like to share my screen and then. I hope you can all see my screen as well. Can you all see my screen? Can someone say yes? I'm not able to see the chat line, so who can say yes? Um, yes, we can see your screen. Um, the challenge here is that um, attendees will not be able to speak. They've been muted. OK, fantastic. Thank you so much. All right, so I'll just get started because of time. So once again, um, thank you everyone for tonight. I'd um, like to thank the organizers of this uh, platform and um, session. I believe this series actually will do 
everyone a great deal of good and also propel us towards developing ourselves to become better. Um, so I'm going to be speaking on cultivating a growth mindset in teaching or for teachers. And um, the regular thing that most times sessions like this will require us to answer is, while I know you might not be able to unmute yourself to answer, but I'd like you to get to know that the very first place for us to start is the question, what is mindset or what are mindsets? Um, because this is the very foundation that we all need to build upon. One way or the other, we are operating on a type of mindset. But it's very important for you to know what it truly means. And I'll go very straight to the point. Um, for ease of understanding, I've put together a definition that can help us not just to understand what mindsets are, but also to begin to reflect on the kind of mindset that we operate in. So I have here on the screen that mindset is a fixed mental attitude and disposition about a thing or situation. And so when you look at your disposition over a matter, when you look at your attitude over a matter, when I look at your disposition, your behavior about teaching and the world of teaching and the concerns of teaching, when I look at your disposition about your attitude concerning teaching, your teaching job or your teaching profession, I can equally call that a mindset. So several people have mindset about food. They have mindset about traveling. They have mindset about trainings. They have mindset about uh, growth. They have mindset about success. What that means is that they have a kind of attitude when it comes to that thing called money, when it comes to that thing called training, when it comes to that thing, whatever it is. So whenever you think about it, in a sector like ours, in an industry like education, um, you begin to see that there are many times that you have what you call prevailing mindset, a prevailing attitude over something. When you see some people say, you know, Nigerian teachers don't like X, Y, Z, that disposition is what someone is describing. That attitude is what someone is describing. Ah, I've heard before that some people have a bad mindset towards training meaning that their attitude and disposition about training might not be positive enough. So this is where we need to look at it, that how do we get to cultivate the kind of mindset that we have or that we should have to cause us to grow? And so this is where you can discover your reality. There are two types of mindsets. Um, we have the growth mindset. We have the fixed mindset. I repeat. There's the growth mindset, and there's also the fixed mindset. And you cannot have the two at the same time. Whenever you think about your life, you think about your work, you think about your profession, you think about your attitude, you think about your performances, you will find out that most of the time, there is a predominant okay. mindset that you have, a predominant disposition, a fixed attitude about something. So when you think about the growth mindset, it speaks about certain attitude. You can see on the screen, I put together something that you can look at. And when someone has a growth mindset, it probably will say, I can learn anything I want to. Someone with fixed mindset, their response will be, I'm either good at it or I'm not. Sometimes when you speak to some people about a subject matter, once they are frustrated, you know, they give up meaning that they are operating from a fixated mindset. But for some other people, whenever they are frustrated, they acknowledge the frustration, but yet they persevere. When you look at these are the reasons why some of us have different results from the others. That's why sometimes some teachers show outstanding attitude and performance than the others. That's why it looks like some people rise, win awards, do break through things and the others fold their arms and say well if it's going to be it's going to be it is a mindset that is at the base and the foundation of such realities think about it someone says with the growth mindset i want to challenge myself this new session 2023 2024 session i want to challenge myself another person will say you know what i'm not going to kill myself i'm not as i am as long as i have something i will eat as long as my salary is coming 
I don't like to be challenged. It is called stress. That's a fixed mindset. For a growth mindset, when I fail, I learn. For a fixed mindset, when I fail, I'm no good. They turn themselves into victims of stereotypes. They start labeling themselves. I'm no good. There's nothing good about me. That's how my life is. Maybe it's from the village. You know, things like that occur. For someone with a growth mindset, they say, tell me. I try hard, right? But then another person will tell me I'm smart. That's a fixed mindset. If you succeed, I'm inspired. That's a growth mindset. If you succeed, I feel threatened. That is the reason why I sometimes see a sad reality among teachers today. Teachers often don't share expertise, especially the results they've been able to achieve. And this is because a lot of them feel threatened when someone else succeeds. A lot of them feel threatened when someone else gains currency, gains popularity, gains followership. Because they feel threatened, they don't stay excited. But someone else with a growth mindset will say, your success becomes my success. And when you think about the last item on the screen, um, a growth mindset person says, my effort and attitude determine everything. However, a fixated mindset says, my abilities determine everything. That means if there's something you don't feel you are currently having the ability to do, most times people excuse them from excuse themselves from such. And there's nothing as bad as you shortchanging yourself in life. There's nothing as bad as you excusing yourself from possibilities that your name can define. There's nothing as bad as you working and you know, staying in a sector and in an industry that you yourself cannot actually make your name turn to a signature. And that's what makes a lot of people lose their hunger, they lose their drive, finally they lose their inspiration, and in place of that, frustration sets in, and then a lot of times people begin to fall into depression or begin to give up. So what does that take us to? It takes us to the consciousness that there are four levels of awareness. So you know whether you are actually at the right level. I'm just going to explain this and then I'll round off. Everyone would have actually been in one or two of these. And preferably, the goal behind the session is for you to cultivate a mindset that would help you propel yourself towards what I call perpetual growth, perpetual development. Perpetual means continuous, something that is repetitive in pattern. So let's talk about the first level of growth. And that's, I mean, at the first level of awareness. It's called unconscious incompetence. There are lots of teachers out there today. They are not even aware of the things that they lack. They are not even aware of the things that they are incompetent at. Simply put it this way. They don't know. Unfortunately, they don't even know that they don't know. And when sometimes people come to help them, they don't act as if they need help because they don't know that they don't know. This is a big problem in Africa and in Nigeria, to be precise, because most people do not get to surrender for help. In fact, at this stage, it is so difficult to transfer knowledge, to transfer skill, or to offer help to people at this level. They are unaware of the things that they are incompetent at. Now, the second level is when people are able to migrate away from the first stage of awareness and they are able to move into a place where now they're having sound bite of information. They are now conscious of their incompetence. Now, thanks to the organizers, we have put together something that brings several experts and several thought leaders within the ecosystem of teaching and profession of education when you begin to hear sessions that we're having tonight and along the series, please, I'd like to encourage everyone to be here on all the series, all the series, sorry, that we have at this session, the Saturdays, this Saturday, next Saturday, and the likes. You need to understand why I'm saying this, because conversations and sessions like this begin to bring you to a place of conscious incompetence, where you are aware of the things that you don't know. Now, the power of being conscious of your incompetence is that it causes you to have what you call the hunger for dependence. This is a level of awareness where you are not dependent on people. You're probably going to ask questions. You're going to ask questions. Oh, my colleague, how did you do this? How can someone ride 
their career ladder? How can someone rise to the top? How can a teacher make money? How can a teacher thrive? How can a teacher succeed in the classroom and outside of the classroom? Why are you asking the question? Because you know you don't know. Unlike the first set of people, they don't even know that they don't know. They are not acting like they don't know. And then this is where it takes you to the level of independence. Now you are conscious of your competence. When you move away from unconscious incompetence and you move to conscious incompetence, the growth level or the next awareness level is where you are now consciously competent. If any of you know how to drive, you will remember that the days when you began to learn how to drive, you were very conscious. You observed. You were careful on the indicator. You were careful before you went into another lane. You were careful in talking. You were careful in observing the traffic light and the rules. That is what conscious competence is. If you know how to cook today, you will see conscious competence in the days when you began to learn how to cook. If they tell you two tablespoons of salt, you will measure it with tablespoon. Why? Because you are consciously following the instruction. You are conscious of your competence. If you can remember the day you started brushing on your own, you follow the instruction of how you move the brush and how you gargle water and how you, you know, cleanse your breath. Why am I saying this? Because this is at the place of conscious competence. Now, when you are able to move from this level, you begin to see that you are moving from a fixated point. You are now embracing a growth mindset, which takes you to the fourth level where you are now at a level of unconscious competence. Unconscious competence is when things now become automated to you. You have gotten to a place of mastery because you have repeated it over a period of time. Let me ask you a quick question. If you think about it, for those of you who have done something over and over again, let me give an example. Let's say in your house, suddenly you have a power outage and then the lights are off. You know that because you are familiar with your house or your room, you can navigate your room without any form of illumination and you will pass through without hitting your head. Why? It is now automated to you. You are so familiar with your room that you can go anywhere without any major form of illumination. For a stranger, it will be difficult. But for you, it is easier. Why? You are now at a place of unconscious competence. When you learned how to cook, you were measuring with tablespoons. But now you have mastered the food. You just use your eyes to gauge it. That is what con unconscious competence level is. And that's the goal. For every teacher to move from unconscious incompetence to unconscious competence, where they now are at a state of mastery. That is what enhances you to begin to cultivate, you know, a growth mindset. And as I bring this to a close, let's look at some things that you can easily take away as practical steps. So I'm going to share with you the star growth mindset model of engagement, right? Um, and this is one thing you can see happening in your work. So when you think about it, your goal behind it is that anytime you see a student, when teacher and student collide, you must understand the point of intersection is relationship. Positive relationship, functional relationship, knowledge and value-based relationship will create the results that you have. But un unfortunately, a lot of us have a bias to students that whenever we now meet with them, instead of having relationship, we have a clash. We have, we have a disconnect. And so our goal is that as we cultivate um, growth mindset, it should lead to us having teacher-student relationship. That is only when connection takes place, which will pave way for communication afterwards. Think about it. When you, as a teacher, when you meet with the content or the core of your job, some people say job description, some people say learning outcome, some people say course, uh, curriculum, some people say scheme of work or plan or, or lesson plan. When you bring your, a teacher in conjunction, when their content mixed together, it should produce clarity. Now, when clarity is not there for the teacher, it means that the teacher and his content have not mixed together. There is a big time integration problem. And that's why you need to become someone with a growth mindset to say how and what ways can I make my content mix with true reality? And then it takes you to the third one, that when you 
as a staff don't understand your mandate, you can always find it difficult to, in fact, what it comes up with is frustration. Now, another equation is when the student also experiences, how do I put it, a mandate, more or less the mandate of learning, uh, or oh, our goal is uh, this is what we want to achieve. You find out that the student is challenged, challenged to doing more, which eventually leads to the final one. That the teacher and the student and good content mixed together, what it produces is optimal performance. And so you look at yourself, what are the results that you have today? What was the result you had last term? What were the outcomes you had last session? Could it be that you connected with the student without your content? Could it be you connected more with your content, but you didn't connect with the student? I want to counsel you as you grow and build a positive growth mindset. Cultivate an interaction that brings you, your student, and your content to become one. When the teacher, the student, and content becomes one, the result is optimal performance. So I'd like to stop there. Thank you very much. I hope you've learned one or two things, and um, I'll be open to questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Coach Eitayo. That's Coach Roe. Coach is a coach of coaches. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. And we'll be having the question and answer section, but not now. Not now. I think Ms. Ladis is already introducing the next speaker. Ms. Ladis, kindly unmute yourself while you continue with your introduction. Okay, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Rutsumi, for that session. I believe we all move from unconscious incompetence to unconscious competence. So the next speaker is um, Mr. Okpoifa Olasukomi. Like I said earlier, he's the English language and literature teacher and entertainer, a public speaker, and an educational coach. He's also the convener of Phenomena 1.0, an educator also and a social innovator. Um, Mr. Okwaifa Mr. will be taking us on social, um, was it him? Application of social, was it? Incorporating social impact Incorporating projects. Incorporating social impact projects. So let's stay tuned well. Mr. Kwefa, take us on that ride. Mr. Kwefa, you have the floor, please. Thank you very much. Um, good evening to everyone, and um, special greetings to uh, Mr. Rutimi Itayo. Thank you for that wonderful session. Thank you for opening our eyes to something different, something new. Um, growth mindset is such that a topic that um, every teacher should. Um, learn and um, operate with because education is really changing all right quickly i'm going to thank you so much um, once again um Ola Sonoye Gladys and thank you for the introduction thank you uh, Shola for this uh, wonderful okay she would prefer to call, for me to call her coach um Sojibra all right because of my time let me quickly jump jump into it I believe you can see my screen uh, if you can see it and if you can hear me also um, you can quickly use the chat option to confirm that so i'll be yeah, taking your space, in, co all right thank you very much incorporating social impact project i mean I, and i love where mr rutimi picked it from uh that's growth mindset it takes a teacher with a, a growth mindset to want to think about anything around this topic for at least to to embrace something like this Social impact is not something that is just everywhere. A teacher who is boxed up, a teacher who just focuses on the curriculum alone, a teacher who believes that it is just between eight and four o'clock, a teacher who believes it is Monday to Friday, will never think of anything like this. Even when something like this is said in the presence of such a teacher, I mean, there is this, you know, there is this thinking that it is not meant for people like us. I don't know whether some of us have that mentality or we've had that before. You just have it that no, it's not. I mean, you just know that yes, just like 
for some of us that don't smoke or probably drink, you just say, no, it's not just for me. You know, something that's just not, not meant for you. You don't eat frog, for instance, now, you know, when they say, oh, frog is delicious, it doesn't even enter into any of your psychology. That is how um, social impact is to a teacher without a growth mindset. And we're going to be looking at how we as educators can incorporate something like this. And I'm starting with the fact that you need a growth mindset. You cannot be boxed. You need to think outside the box. And I think somebody had said that, don't just even think outside the box, think around the box, think behind the box, think under the box, just make sure you break the box and then you keep on thinking. So what is that um, big question? And that's the question we want to answer here. What is a social impact project? I'm going to be defining it straight from my note. A social impact project is an initiative or an endeavor designed to create positive and meaningful changes in the society. Now that takes us to the definition of who a teacher is, so that regular balance we hear. A teaching job is a noble profession. Now if it is truly noble, and I, th I think we should be at the center of um, creating positive and meaningful changes in our society. Now, when we say social impact project, let me bring it down a little bit. Just the way the definition is as simple as that. Don't think it's like my mentor will say, don't think it too much. It's as simple as what I define. I'm going to take it again. A social impact project, initiative, that thought, that action, that very simple action, that extra thing that you do, designed the idea behind this is just to what to create a positive and meaningful changes in the society the school has closed and you discover that you didn't cover the scheme very well especially some of us that um have this large class in the public school and then because of whatever reason you could not cover an exam is coming you can simply organize maybe a weekend class for your student and then you take them through something different from what you have been doing in the classroom. That is social impact project. I'm going to also tell my story along uh, as I as I as I take this session. I remember back then in 2013 when I just um, came to this land, and I discovered that there's a particular topic missing in our scheme of work. Then, as an English teacher, there was no way and. Up, there's no way rather to you can teach grammatical names and function without teaching finite verb. I also discovered that we could not teach students how to write essay very well because the scheme of work is so limited to only the address of the letter or something very limited. I decided on my own that okay for the first time in this school anyway. So I gathered my student on Saturday and that's how we started uh, what we now call different names now. The students will come around and then of course that is an extra thing on my own part. It's not part of my salary. I just don't want the student to graduate from secondary school and fill work, which had been the case, and then they'll be roaming the streets. I wanted something different in the society. I mean, that's as simple as that. You discover that these students are graduating and uh, they don't gain admission immediately. At the same time, they are becoming useless in society. And you decide to just organize, I think, a form of skill acquisition for them where you can teach them how to make this and that's something simple that they can sell and make some. That's something that can engage them. That is social impact project. So the definition, again, is what I said. That that's very simple thing you do to create positive impact in the society, of course, away from your regular engagement at work. What other names do we call social impact? I would have loved us to try this in the chat, but those who are fast enough that can do this, if you have any other name, you think what I have just defined is now, you can please can, can you go to the chat box and um, let me hear from you. What you call social innovation, social innovation initiatives? Yes, it's called um, is the same thing. Community development project that we call it, civic engagement programs, philanthropic endeavors. So let me hear, let me see, let me read from you. What do you call an endeavor like this? What other names can you call this before we go to the benefits? I will read it out as soon as I see anybody's point. OK, so while I'm waiting for that, let me go, just quickly go to the next. Uh, the next slide here, okay, somebody's calling CSR. What is CSR? Make it easy for me. Community service. All right, CSR, make it easy for me. Community development. Yes, thank you, Favor. Thank you, Musa. Musa says community service. Favor said community development. Abodri says uh, said CSR. 
that is um corporate social responsibility wow i love this one volunteering i love that one volunteering <laughs> and this is funny but i'm going to say it's sacrificial labor social work okay uh mentorship okay all right so all these names i believe you on that somebody says cds all right this reminds me of um nyc right as a community development service yes cds csr cds any name just make sure you are impacting social service you are impacting your society so why do we need to do this why do we need to do this remember you are a teacher Um, I believe you can still hear me. We can hear you, sir. All right. Somebody is saying change maker project. Yes. Okay. So you can keep it there and just, just let it keep coming, and then I will be picking it from there. So why do we need to do this? One is um, we want to address some pressing needs. You know, when, before you can talk, okay, service to humanity. So I'm going to go away from that. Anything you post there, I'll read it later. Okay, so why do we need to do what is the benefit for this now? There, there, there is always there is always be a problem around us. And believe me, you the government cannot do everything. Your school principal, your school owner, your the head of the school, your colleague, your HOD cannot solve all the problem. So there will always be a pressing issue that you know that you can solve. Uh, you get into the staff room, it's clear that the teachers do not understand how to use computer and you have this knowledge. Well, in case you are like some of us, you don't want to really make money out of it. You know they cannot even afford it anyway. You can come together, put six together, put three together, I mean a number, and then you are solving that problem. Okay, there's a present issue there and you want to solve it. You want to empower the community. You just want a different community. You see these young boys on your streets always looking for trouble. You see the out of school children stealing things here and there, and you just you are just bothered. You can bring them together and then you empower them and then they become that um, great person. I mean, you must have seen someone like Anthony Rappu. I mean, the pastor is doing a great job with the drug addict. I mean, you may not need to do it that far. I believe there are wonderful schools in Lagos where you can, I mean, once you look around, there are problems. So you want to solve the problem. You want to empower the community. You want to transform your community. You want equity. You discover that, yes, lady, girls do not have the advantage that boys have, or boys do not have the same advantage. And you just want to bridge the gap there. You can just step in and do something different. You want to foster empathy. And let me tell you, it starts from there. If you want to do something like social impact project, the foundation of which is empathy. You are feeling the same pain. I can just imagine if I had failed work while I was in secondary school. Nobody would know if I today. It's obvious because my father had promised me that I was I would be trans sent to um, Port Harcourt to go and learn how to sell spare parts. He had promised me that. Imagine I had failed. All right, so there's a problem here already, and I need someone that will come and do social impact projects for me. Uh, we need to upgrade the internet service in my village here. So there is a problem here. I believe you can still hear me. Sorry, that knocked me off. We can hear you. All right, so sorry for that. So, but uh, there is a problem already here that I think I need to now address quickly now. That is the problem of internet. I need to write to Airtel, write to MTN and everything. Yeah, I think we, we, we solved that together. All right, let me continue. Uh, empathy, I think I was telling you a story. 
how, how a man opened a library in my community, made it free, and someone like someone like me could attend, I mean, could use the facilities there, and I was able to make Waiyaki Jam and I gain admission. If I had failed that year, I would have been something else. So empathy. Now, doing that now, anytime I see students around not having the same opportunity, I want just to create something different around me. So beyond all this, this four here, uh, the following, skill development is there, encouraging innovation around you is there, building responsible citizens is there, creating sustainable change is there, raising awareness and education and um, contributing to global goals. You just want to do something. Those are the benefits that we have there. Now, what are the social impact? Now, do we compare this with educators now? What a social impact and educator? What are the things that you can do? These are the about five things I've itemized here now. Service learning is one thing that we can do. And what is service learning? Very simple. When you want to integrate what you learn in the curriculum, what your students learn in the classroom, for them to apply it in the, in the real world, okay? You, you take the knowledge from the classroom now to the real world. You talk about a particular way of planting um, certain things in a faster, in a better way. Well, I don't want to use the word GMO anyway, but in a, in a better way. And there you are, the students are taking it to the, to the farm for their parents. You discover that, okay, light could be generated in a particular way. I mean, you learn that in physics class. Now, you're, you want to encourage your children, your student to go ahead and practice that. Let me just use a very simple example. You're a civic education teacher and you have taught your students um, road safety, something around road safety, how to cross the road and the rest. And then you know that this particular primary school, anytime uh, the school closes, the children just run to the road and you have had cases of um, children being run over by vehicles. You want to make your students, maybe the senior secondary school one now, to, to close on time and get to the road and assist those younger ones, stop the vehicles for them and let them cross properly. That is service learning. Once you learn that in the classroom and you are taking it into the society. That's one example of project that you can do or social impact project that a teacher can do. Another one here is project-based learning where you are encouraging the student to design projects that can address global challenges, that can foster critical thinking on their part, that can foster a form of collaboration where they can work together. You can also do that as a teacher. Beyond this, you can also do a form of community partnership. Something is not going on well. Maybe there's this particular gutter. Anytime it rains, it blocks, it gets blocked, and then it affects certain things in the community. You, and you, you just want to be there. Community partnership is another um, project you can do as a teacher. You want to see things at a global perspective. We are beyond the regular things. And we talk about climate change these days now. Of course, your student may not be able to do so much, but talking about it alone on social media, creating a small gathering where students can just sit down and deliberate, have a form of symposium, and you put it on social media where other students can learn, where they can think of global perspective. You are building them beyond national citizens. They are becoming global citizens. And Okay, I think I've mentioned that now. Um, sustainability of certain activities you want to do around you, maybe how to reduce waste around you, how to um, convert some products into either reusable one or to recycle things, so that's sustainability. So different aspects of this. There are so many of these that we can look at because of time, but basically service learning is one, imp one social impact you want to do, project-based learning is one, community partnership is one you want to do, global perspective is another one, and sustainability is there another one. So let me quickly take it like this. Let's break it into these three. This can be broken down into three. There are projects you can do as a teacher that are called education-centric. They are core education projects. They are just core education projects where we talk about service learning the other in the, uh, the other time now. You take knowledge from your classroom, you take it to the real world. That one is core. You are doing it right, and it's affecting the education of your student. It's affecting the education of those who are under you. Affecting the curriculum. You are taking the you are using the curriculum to create project. That one is called core education project. The next one is quasi education project. It's not really one represent, or it's just related to education. You look around you that, OK, students are not um, learning very well because they do not have breakfast. Now, it all depends on you. I'm just an example, OK? And then you decide to invite 
uh, maybe company producing noodles, that's okay. What can you do to help our community? While they're advertising their product, maybe every morning they come to the school gates and then they serve these children um, something good for breakfast. Or you just reach out to this stationary organization and you get some things from them to do a form of a welcome back project for school. Or you just see that there's a, a, a shoemaker not too far from you and they can make cheap shoes for you. Maybe you just, just perform here and there and you give it to student. 100% is not about their education, writing and passing the exam in the classroom, but it's related to things that can make them happy in the classroom. And finally, is a non-education project that you can do. You can just come into, just go into the society and you are doing, I love to do this, but I don't know whether how, how appropriate it is in Nigeria, where you discover that um, the students are not doing well when it comes to sanitary pad or the, yeah, the stuff around that. And you just want to, make it a difference in that area. So that one is no longer education project, it's not around health. So your project can still go around any other thing. As a teacher, you are just being noble. You want to cause a change. You are a change maker. Now, how do you direct your social impact project? You don't want to waste energy, you know. You want to do things that should, that um, the society want to relate with. They, you want to be relevant. So. I will advise, I mean, just a piece of advice anyway, that you surround whatever you are doing around these SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. There are 17 of them, and I believe we are conversing with them. If you are not, please kindly get to your search engine today and just type it, ask for, to know. For instance, I think mine is around just two, SDG 4 and SDG 10. That's where we are talking about quality education and reduced inequality. I just believe that I should just give the best in my classroom. I should give the best, and that's quality education. I should I should uh, contribute to teacher development. And beyond that, I can't imagine my children in the next 10 years competing with a child that went to a better school in terms of technology. So no matter how small, I want to donate technological tools to schools around me. So that is reducing inequality there, at the same time offering quality education. Then may I ask you, which one is your own? You're a physics teacher, you want to talk about clean education. Beyond the, the curriculum, beyond the, the your, your eight o'clock to four o'clock, you want to look at clean energy, you want to look at clean water, you want to look at zero hunger, you are looking at no poverty, giving them empowerment. A whole lot of projects can be done around this. If you want to learn more, just check online. There is a full document on SDG. It talks about the target, it talks about the goal and the target so you want to read this one and then know exactly what you are supposed to do there so you and uh okay i think that will take us to okay it's not yet there don't worry i know there's a major question in the mind of everyone now funding we'll get there okay and then i'll tell the story and then we'll move on with that so how do you design design your uh social impact project if you know what to call design thinking, it's very simple. Design thinking is, yeah, of course, a prototype. It's just something simple. I've mentioned it since. Empathize. Look around you. What is that problem around you? Okay, imagine, put yourself in the shoes of these people. How will they feel? No, don't just sympathize. Somebody says sympathy will just make you to pity the person. Empathy will put you in the shoe of that person, and then you want to solve the problem for that person. So empathize and look around you. Okay, this student go late, this particular set of children go late to school because there's traffic problem here. What can I do? This particular classroom is leaking and the students are not learning very well. I, I, I watched and I read the story of a very great teacher in Nigeria, Joy Ifine, that got to a classroom and discovered that the students did not have uh, desk and chairs. Now, of course, she, she didn't have the money to. Somehow, I think she, there's something about waste to desk that she did. She, she must have taken the train to also go and learn carpentry. They got materials. There were, they, they, they were pictures of students cutting the planks, kneeling it themselves. Now, she didn't just provide the furniture for them, but she also empower them such that forever, anywhere they go, they can solve problems. So she empathized with them and she was able to do that. Then when you do that, you define the problem. Okay, you define it. This is the main problem that they have here and then start thinking about it. I did think, okay, what can I do? Okay, maybe you can get this, you can get that. Think outside the box, you can just solve the problem there. And then create something, check it first. Maybe do two or three, a form of prototype. Okay, it works fine. Then you can hit it, test it, and it's working for you. Now, this you don't need to restrict yourself to this order. The bottom line is this, see the problem, empathize, think of think outside the box to get a solution, test it, if it works fine, continue. If it doesn't work, I go back to the drawing board and try it again. And you can teach this. 
So the golden part, how do I fund this? Of course, social impact project requires fund. The first thing I tell anybody is don't expect any money from anybody when you want to do anything. Yeah, you may be lucky. I mean, some of us, you can just try it and talk to a friend and say, oh, wonderful project. Don't worry. I mean, and then you have it. But most of the time, you want to start from yourself. You want to put that sacrifice down. We talk about that great teacher in Kenya today. We know him as today. We know Peter Tabichi as uh, the best teacher in the world. He won the award in 2019, I believe. So you want to start with what you have. Of course, it's not to go and kill yourself. Check around you. How can you start? You may not even need to, to spend money. The first time I organized tutorial for my student outside this normal school time, the only thing that cost me was just my transportation down to school. I told the student this is the material we want to use, and photocopying around then was three naira. I gave it to them. They went around. They made photocopies of the materials, and we used it in the classroom. You can communicate your ideas to them, but just be available. Your time is there. You may have some of these resources around you. Check, check around you. You have children in your community that cannot read, and you have a lot of reading materials in your house. Bring it out and then start something there. Somebody may just be passing and see you that oh, you are doing something great. Let me, I don't know whether you saw this story on social media. There's this neighbor of mine. Let me call him a neighbor anyway, although I don't know where he lives, but I know we live on the same address here. He repairs our road. We call him Baba Fema. He repairs our road all the time. I think somebody gave him an idea. I mean, and he will just go and bring this debris from anywhere, put it in one interesting car like that, bring it to the middle of the road, and then start doing it. The day you pass, you can give him 100 naira or anything. Maybe somebody gave him the idea. He went to do it in front of... Um, not too far, sectarian, we call it sectarian, it's very close to us of assembly and the rest. And then I learned that he was given a truck recently. So you want to start with what you have. He started with what he has anyway. And you can check around, there are grants that you can apply for. There is a pollination grant, pollination project grant that can give you about 1,000 projects and they are very faithful to it, $1,000. Once you just meet the criteria and you have something, so you don't even need to have your NGO or your organization very registered like that, okay? you can still get funded there. And of course, you know you are going to give account of every amount. The basic thing, you must be faithful to this because once you are faithful to a little one, you will be sponsored the more. And then, of course, you will tell your story on social media. Everybody wants to be part of this with you. Uh, I think my time is far spent. Let me quickly rush it here. You want to seek for corporate sponsorship. You want to seek for individual donations from your friends. You may want to do crowdfunding and you, or you want to check whether there are government funding there. In conclusion, may I tell you, you are more than a teacher. You are more than a teacher. Education for you is not just filling the minds. It's about lightning fires. And social impact projects are the spark that ignites a passion for learning and empowers educators to guide students towards creating a better world. You are a noble teacher. Keep on uh, making your nobility known to others and make the world a better place. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Kwaifa. Wow, wow, wow. This is short and powerful also. Like from the growth mindset, after you have a growth mindset, then you start thinking big. You start thinking more than yourself. That's why you think about um, your society, your surrounding, and start helping people. And that is where we need to be as teachers. Don't allow your salary limits you. Think big, think global. Like Mr. Akwaifa said sometimes, think global and teach locally. This is a wonderful one tonight. So I don't know if you have any questions. I think we still have little time for questions. If you have any questions, please. Drop your questions on the chat box, please. We have less than um, how many minutes to do that? Less than eight the minutes to do that before round up. And answer section, and then and we have our own social innovator that's a last come your paper. So you can just post a question on the chat box, you can ask your question. And I'm sure that there are 
more than willing to answer your question. Please, thank you. Exactly. Since nobody wants to ask a question, like everybody is satisfied. I think let's just give them some. Some people are still thinking. <laughs> they are trying to acclimatize what they've learned tonight. <laughs> okay, and so I if also you want. Um, can I speak? Okay. Somebody. Somebody dropped a question. Okay, Maria Ojila said, I know. Okay, okay, that's not a question. I think that's a comment. So kindly um, use the link. Drop the, There's a link in the chat section. Kindly use it to drop your feedback, please. As we go on tonight, have a growth mindset and think of social. I'm glad I think um, there is a question you can do somewhere. With you. Yeah, I think you should check Kabi okay. Kabiru Abbas. He has a question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, I've seen it. The question most time is how to find like minds to work with as a team. How could you respond to this? Mr. Akwa, this question is for you. How do you find like minds to work as a team? From Kabiru right. A. Yeah, uh, that's um, Dr. Kabiru Abbas. Thank you, sir. Um it, to me. There are things you have answered this question anyway, but I just feel it starts from you. Do something. Let the world know you for something first. Let me I quickly use the example of phenomenon conference that we had in Abuja. Um, Gladys, you played a very vital role. If you had never started anything, like okay, let's even take a step forward, you will not be there to assist where you assisted. I mean, we ne I never discussed anything with you, but when it was time for uh, what did we have? I just saw you on the stage and you just took over like a stage manager. I mean, that's one thing. You start something. Uh, I deliberately jumped into Gladys' um, response anyway. I mean, look at how we team together. That's Shola and I and um, Olale Kwadieko. Somebody is already doing something. And then, okay, we've seen you that you are doing it great. You are doing it well in your small corner. And you are opportunity automatically you'll be open to others. So you start something great. Start it in a small way in your own area. Before you know it, go on social media. You will see 1,001 that are doing the same thing there, and you just want to send a text message to the person that you are doing great. Of course, most of the time, you may not even get another person who wants to collaborate with you. Fine, move on to another person. Before you know it, you are going to form a great team, and you're going to be working together. However, it starts from you. Start something. Yeah, start something. That's something and have it have the big picture there. So you won't be easily discouraged. Then another person asked again, please, can we have the five star model of growth mindset engagement again? Okay, that's from Mr. Rutumi Aitayo. The five star model growth mindset. Mr. Aitayo, Rutumi, are you still on call? Yes. Yes, please. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, can you? I can hear you clearly, sir. Okay, so I believe uh, the person was talking about the STAM group mindset model. Um, do you want me to project it or just read it out? Uh, why not project it? Maybe the person wants to take a picture or something. All right, that's fine. Um, Um, so, Molara said, I also think, okay. All right, so if you can, if you can uh, see my screen, um, the very first one that I was talking about was the one with the student-teacher relationship, that the intersection between a teacher and a student um, is actually what you have as relationship. When you look at a teacher who is trying to drive quality outcomes through his teaching, um, it must be able to find that point of intersection and that's relationship. 
The second one is the teacher and his content or the core of teaching or whatever sometimes we call as the learning outcomes. You must have clarity as when your content mix with you or joins with you, the natural outcome is clarity. If it's not clarity, then, then you don't have, uh, then you probably have um, a, a mindset that you need to look out for, which this particular one can work either way with the, with the staff, which is the teacher and their mandate, or better still, the student and their mandate. Now, when they look at the mandate that they ought to achieve, you know, academic excellence, you know, being entrepreneurial and all those kind of things that we normally do, the outcome is that it should cause them to accept a challenge, the challenge to do more or the challenge to succeed. When there is no intersection, when the mandate is on its own, you must succeed is on its own. You must achieve it on its own. It doesn't mix with that person, the teacher or the student. No one gets to accept the challenge. And finally, the intersection of the three, that's the teacher, student, and their content, always leads to optimal performance. If you look at any time when you succeeded or you helped and assisted your student to succeed, most likely there was an intersection with the content mixed with the teacher and then mixed with the relationship with the student. So that's pretty much what that is about. I hope that has answered the question. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, sir. So, okay, another person, Messi is asking, talking about growth mindset, is it right to ask your HOS, that's your head of school, to, I think she's trying to say, to appraise you, despite if it is not done in your school? I think this question still goes to Mr. Sharitone Itayo. She's asking if she can ask the HOS, like, like the, um, the principal, to appraise her. Absolutely. Um, appraisal is a feedback system and it can be feedback feed forward. Um, you can actually ask anyone to appraise you, but cost statutory, depending on the structure in your school. Um, yes, if, if you are able to tell someone to appraise you, it means you are willing to get feedback. And the feedback should not just be static, it should be something you are able to integrate and implement. Sometimes feedback might be painful. I like to prepare your mind for that. Um, but the truth about it is that um, you can always get to work on it to become better. When people know better, it is said that they do better. So yes, your HOS or anyone that is more like a line head, you can submit yourself to appraise you just to be able to know if you're functioning with a growth mindset or fixed mindset, if you're comfortable with the outcome that you have so that you can actually get to do much more. Um, I normally try to tell people that the moment when you are satisfied consistently about who you are and what you do, then it means you are not growing any longer. And they say satisfaction is the symptom of death. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, sir. I think that will be all this evening. Um, before we go, can we please on our camera so we can see our faces and have pictures, please? Turn on your camera, please, for pictures. And um, this webinar is brought to you by Change Makers and X. The webinar is brought to you by Change Makers and Teacher X. And we'll be having more of this throughout the month of August. Look at your beautiful faces. <laughs> okay. Let's have pictures before we go. I hope it was impactful. And we'll see you next Saturday for the next webinar. Taking pictures. Okay. Some people are refusing to turn on their cameras. They don't want me to see their beautiful face.
Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for tonight. We'll see you again on Saturday. Mrs. Olaso, you. Thank you for your <laughs> wonderful moderation. Thank you, Coach Isaiah. Thank you very much, Matt. Mr. Kwa, if I cannot say thank you, it's a co-convener of this webinar to from Teacher X. Thank you, everybody. Can leave you the feedback form so that we'll be able to, you know, do better the next time. I mean, this is our own social innovation, social project. We are giving back, we are whatever yeah, we cool. have, we are trying to, you know, give back to this sector. Thank you for joining us tonight. See you again next week. Bye. Yeah, good night. Good night, everyone.